back on the program good morning abuja and this morning we have our first guest in the studio i'm talking about someone who is a motivational speaker a medical doctor as well as one who advocates the rights of women and uh, of course she's a woman herself and uh, we're meeting sabiha hussein it's a pleasure having you in our studio thank you very much for having yes. me yes Today, our conversation is centering around women development in the 21st century. Okay. Yes. And I, I am, I am I, in fact, I, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. women generally have come a very long way. Yes, they have. Yes. Uh, they have this place in the society that is specially reserved for them. But how do you think we can better their position in the society? Okay. Um... For me and the work I do, I really focus more on the woman herself okay. and how the society perceives her is a lot to do with how she perceives herself. herself. So what I focus on is women empowering themselves from within, educating themselves, because a lot of the shackles that we have is in our mind. We do not try to grasp them because we don't even know we're capable of doing that. So a lot of the work I do is with northern women and it has a lot to do with unshackling the mind it's by being aware developing yourself from the inside out before we even talk about you know um taking things from the society really a lot of the times the woman does not know she's capable of a lot of things all right when you mention now that the work you do has to do with um mostly getting them to understand the power that they have within them unshackling whatever is holding them back mm -hmm. and you mentioned that your work is centered around northern nigeria mm -hmm. now let's let's look at what are some of those things in northern nigeria that you feel is contributing to putting the shackles in the minds of these women culture okay. plays a very big role so where we are from the conservative nature of the culture um there is a lot of um misunderstood um religion as well so there is a lot of misogyny regarding the women and the things that women are able to do, there is restrictions on education, there is restriction on empowerment, there is restriction on financial freedom, there is restriction on a lot of things for a lot of women. Now, this does not apply to all women in every household. Obviously, it varies, right? But some of the things that we do is by having conversations. We're changing the world one woman at a time, one conversation at a time. Because some of these things, um, we come from a society that does not allow us to talk does not allow us to talk about the things that are very important that needs to be discussed. So the topics that we address usually are things you would not normally sit down and talk about with your mother or with your sister. So it's a group of women, like-minded women that come together every month to just discuss things that, you know, would better themselves and better their society, right? So it could be parenting, it could be related to marriage, it could be self-development, self-love, mental health, just anything that helps us come out of that conversation feeling a bit more empowered. Okay. So many argue that women themselves tend to compete against each other, yeah. thereby making it difficult for them to reach out mm -hmm. to each other in terms of helping each other. Yeah. Now, what you're doing is, is selfless. You're, you're going out there to reach out. Mm -hmm. What drives this? And why are women so competitive amongst themselves? I personally am blessed when it comes to sisterhood. I have one sister, blood sister, but I have so many sisters and i do not understand this competition like i know people talk about women competing against each other and i'm not saying this is not something that i encounter like maybe at a workplace or you know in school and stuff but in my circle of women like i don't see it these are women that want each other to grow they mention my names in rooms i've never been in and that's the sisterhood that we talk about right it's woman that understands the pain of another woman and with these conversations that we keep having and educating women you understand that when another woman thrives it doesn't take away from your own it's strong women that empower other women to be stronger as well so we are instilling that feeling of sisterhood in each other so that we can all collectively be there for other women for example, now, you work in a place, well, for me, when I worked um, last year and I had a baby, so let's even before that, when I was pregnant, it was difficult working. And there were a lot of women that were making it even more difficult for me to be a medical doctor working while pregnant or a medical doctor breastfeeding, you know, after I had my baby. It was very, very hard. It was, I got more empathy and more understanding from the men than I got from the women. And now that needs to change. And a lot of times 
it's because of insecurity. A lot of the times it's because you feel like you're threatened by another woman. So really, at, this, at the end of the day, some of these shackles is in our mind. When we understand that another woman can fly, this sky is big enough for all of us to fly. Another woman can fly without taking away from my flight. Okay. Now, mostly as, as a medical doctor, uh, interacting with other women and uh, talking, you said you say when you guys talk, discuss, you talk about everything ranging from um, family to marriage to yeah. uh, all of that, all of those topics you talk mm -hmm. about. Do you feel like these conversations you have and this narrative you're trying to bring in and change uh, the, the mindset of the woman, do mm -hmm. you think this, um, the men are comfortable with this? Do, do you think they see this as um, kind of a threat to how things are or how things used to be? I don't think so. I think men are benefiting from women being um, educated, well-rounded. Well, yes, there are a lot of men that I would say are still backwards in that way. But really, we have a generation of men as well that are open to their women being more educated, being more empowered. But obviously, there are some that they want you to be educated, or, but not too educated. They want you to be empowered, just not too empowered. Um, at the end of the day, my work is with women. Okay. I really, I really just focus solely on the women. You need to reach your maximum potential at the end of the day. Now, whether the man you're with is comfortable with that or not, that's the dynamics between the two of you that you would navigate best in your own way. But my main aim is for women to have well-rounded growth. We can't talk about financial growth alone without talking about emotional and mental, you know, and physical even. There is a lot of work to be done in a wholesome way because you know we are wholesome beings right so at the end of the day i realized that men feel threatened by it and some time back i even made a post about it and i don't know whether it's smart to go into that now but there is going to be a generational gap between the men and the women because the women are doing a lot of work when it comes to self-development the men are focusing on making money and focusing on other things and that's not bad I, I agree that it's a very good thing. But if you look at the way boys are raised and the way girls are raised, there is a gap. The, if you think divorces are high now, imagine our children. Because the gap is going to be seen in the girls that are very educated, very empowered. They know themselves. They know what they want. They know what they will not take. They know what their mothers tolerated and they are not willing to take. And these men are still carbon copies of the men of the previous generation and their fathers. And, you know, so there's going to be a gap. And that gap needs to start being filled now. We're doing the work with women, but I feel like men need men role models to step up, to mentor them as well. We cannot do the work for the men. The men need to come up too. All right. Ah, this conversation is really interesting. As you, you, you're hearing all Doctor has to say here, talking about how the men need to step up and more role models for men need to come up in order to bridge this gap. And this is very correct. This is very true because we know there is actually a huge gap. But we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll have one or two more questions for doctor and um, we'll call it a wrap on the interview segment. Uh, stay with us. We're going to short break now. Welcome back from that short break. And uh, our guest, uh, Dr. Sabiha Hussein is still with us in the studio. And our conversation has been about women empowerment in the 21st century. Um, uh, Sabiha, yeah. now mm -hmm. the 21st century, yeah. Would you say there is a significant or proportionate difference between the what we would term the urban woman mm -hmm. and the rural rural woman in mm -hmm. terms of um, empowerment, mm -hmm. or or how open their mind is to being empowered? Okay, there is definitely going to be a difference because a lot of the times there is difference in education, and education opens your mind up to a lot of things. As I said, some of the shackles are in the mind. Now, that does not mean that the urban woman is not shackled still. Because if you have conversations with people, you'll see someone that is very, very educated, as you would say. But she doesn't believe in herself. She doesn't have that sense of conviction, that sense of self. Well, you'll meet a rural woman that is in the village of village. But her mind, she knows she deserves better. She knows she can get better. She knows um, the value of herself and her children. And she's willing to do all the work that needs to be done. It's just that her situation or her environment hinders some of the growth. So really, as I said, the shackles is in the mind. But education is very important. It plays a very big role in how you even perceive and accept some of the information that we'll give you. So sometimes when we do outreaches to like um, rural areas, right? 
when you have conversations with these women, you realize that the average woman wants the same things, the same basic needs, the care, the love, the understanding, um, empathy from, an, from another human being, companionship. Basically, we all want the same things, right? But now other ambitions are different from the rural woman to the urban woman. It's the same thing with so socioeconomic class as well. You would see differences in a lot of things. But I would say another thing is the urban woman is tired. Okay. I know that the rural women are doing a lot of work, but there is community. And the urban woman, maybe let me say people that are in places like Abuja, we don't have that community. You're doing a lot of the work on your own. Like now, my grandmother had 12 children. She had neighbors, sisters, a community of women. It takes a village, right? Yes. And she had that village around her to help her. If she has another baby, you know, the other one, she's probably not taking care of that child at all. Her sisters are helping her and all. But here, the urban woman would wake up very early, make breakfast. She's the cook. She's the chef. She's the chauffeur. She will do school runs. Then she will go to work. Then she will come back, she will make lunch, she'll pick the children from school, she will do the bathing, she will do the cleaning, she will do, there's a lot of things. Yes, we sometimes have house helps, but some people don't have access to that. And the urban woman is tired. She's very oh. tired. Okay, now I know uh, this whole conversation is just about the women folk, but uh, sorry, there's still men somehow in the spelling of women, so <laughs> we need to bring them in once in a while. So okay. now let's, how can the men make it better for the women? I feel like sometimes something as simple as having a conversation goes a very long way. A lot of the times men are not listening to their wives. They are not talking to the women around them. Really just need to have a conversation with the women around you, open-minded conversation, and there is a lot to be learned. You can hear, but you don't listen. So you need to sit down and listen to what your wife needs or what your mother needs or what your sister needs. Asking conversations like, how can I do better for you? How can I help you? Because sometimes what you want to do for them, the way you think and the way we think might not be the same, right? The way I think and the way she thinks might not be the same as well. The point is, you need to talk to the person you're with. How can I help you? What do you need from me? And we need to, well, men need to educate themselves more on the biology, the emotions, just understanding a woman properly and then developing themselves because a lot of the times you don't know yourself well enough so how will you know another person if you don't understand yourself you cannot begin to understand another human being that it's completely different from you not just biologically but from upbringing you have different experiences trauma that shaped you family values so many things you need to meet each other at you know in the middle and a lot of work needs to be done with education okay and now one final question the men okay now uh normally the 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 idea is uh all a woman wants uh it's money or what money can get yes. so he's out there struggling to get mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and uh let me share an experience i had of a friend mm -hmm. he said he was always working mm -hmm. always working always working and uh, his wife said you're always away you're always at work and everything so um they had issues they had um, a, a quarrel mm -hmm. and so he decided okay for the next two weeks i'm going to be at home i'm going nowhere so he was at home and after the first day the second day the third day uh, she came and was like okay we need this mm. we need that we need this we need that and he was trying to tell her that that is the problem you need these things i can't make the money sitting here at home mm -hmm. so i have to go make this money so if i'm here at home how am i supposed to make this money and uh, of course every month kinds of uh the thinking is you need to go out there get the money to bring mm -hmm. to the woman because yeah. that is what she wants so that she can get everything she wants but obviously our reasoning and as you said what you expect from us uh, there's a, a huge difference in understanding yes. good now as a woman yes what how can you foster this understanding how can you force this man to understand you better without necessarily making it look like it's confrontational okay yes that's a whole another topic it's mm -hmm. a it's a whole conversation i want us to just do this very yes. quickly because it's a uh, whole conversation on communication and really um when you start a conversation with voice raised and confrontation you're not going anywhere you know they say it's rain that grows flowers not thunder right but um, at the same time, yes, women need the financial support that comes with men, but that's not all you bring to the table. When you bring, when, when you ask a man 
the only thing that he's bringing to the table, if it is only money, then for me, I'm not going to be satisfied. Now, I'm not speaking for all women, right? For me, because money is something I can make by myself as well. So what else do you bring to the table, right? So a lot of the times, men just need, as I said, you need to listen to your women. And these women as well probably need to communicate themselves better in a way. Okay. But it takes two to make. It needs two to raise. When you have kids as well, you can't expect just because I brought food to the table, I don't have to be present in their lives. You need to talk to your children because, see, women go to work. They come back and they still work at home. They still talk to these husbands. They still play with these children, still do all the work that needs to be done in the house. It doesn't even necessarily have to be physically, but emotionally you have to connect with these children because 25 years down the line, these children will grow up. And the connection that you want to build then is impossible if you've not built it in their childhood. And the mother is connecting with her children, but are you connecting? And are you satisfied with the relationship you have? It cannot be improved. Are you satisfied with the relationship you have with your children or with your wife? It cannot be improved. The men want all these things that we say women want, the love, the care, the companionship and so much. But it's that maybe it's buried a bit deeper than for the women, especially with our upbringing, the way we were nurtured. So in na naturally we would want these things, but nurture plays a very big role. And if you see the way a lot of people are raised, it plays a role in the way they are fathers, they are co-workers, they are spouses as well. So a lot of it needs to come back to you. You have to do a lot of the work on learning the trauma of your upbringing and the environment and everything, because really the environment we grew up in is quite hard. It's not for soft men, right? But you need to find that softness for your household because it's very important. You cannot do it with thunder. Okay. Well, uh, our conversation has been about that the em empowering the woman, the 21st century woman. And uh, um, Dr. Sabiha Hussein has been our guest on the program. And I'm sure there's a lot you've learned from our conversation so far. Remember what she said? It's rain that grows the flowers, not thunder. I, I, that just entered my head. I'm like, wow, makes a lot of sense. So that is where we're calling it a day on this um, particular segment of the program, which is our interview segment with Dr. Sabia. It's been a pleasure having you on the Thank program. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. Yeah, so whatever you do, whether you're a man or a woman, try to make sure that you break those shackles that is holding you back. Empower yourself, develop yourself, do it with the purpose of making sure that this community, this society, this nation is one that is growing, growing positively, I mean. So we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll meet our second guest.